In this video, I will show you how you can stretch your own canvas and I'll go through some of the benefits of a home stretched canvas uh, versus a store bought one. Please follow the link below for my online painting lessons at krhartlessons.com. So why would you want to add extra work to your studio practice by stretching your own canvases? Uh, let's go through some of the pros and cons. It's more affordable. You can save a lot of money uh, in the long run. You can get a higher quality canvas with sturdier stretcher bars and a much nicer painting surface. You can create exactly the surface that you want uh, and not rely on what kind of prepared canvases are available at your art store. There are many kinds of both linens and canvases um, or canvas fabrics out there that's available. Also, there are quite a few different kinds of gesso options, both store-bought and the, the ones you can make yourself. Let's not forget uh, to mention the cons. Stretching your own canvas is a skill that you develop, but it doesn't uh, have to take that long to learn and really anybody can do it. You have to invest in a few tools, uh, some of which you already might have at home. I stretch all my own canvases and have done for years. I really think it's worth it and I have to admit that I just really don't like the store-bought canvases. I don't like the surface to paint on. And I also kind of think there's something really satisfying about building your own canvases. Uh, you should try it at least once. So let's get started. So this is what you'll need. A mallet, not to be confused with a mullet. A stretcher tool and a stable gun and stables. A long ruler, 45 degree ruler, a pencil scissors, water spray and an iron, and of course canvas fabric and stretcher bars. And here's a quick summary of the workflow. Now we can begin. Number one, connecting the stretcher bars. I'm laying out the stretcher bars, making sure that they're all the same way up. One side is more beveled and that is the side that is facing the canvas. The other side is more flat and that's the back. I then loosely connect them and as um, you maybe can see here, uh, there's sort of a plug and hole that fits together. If the fit is tight, just use the mallet to knock them together. Try to get the shape of the rectangle to be as straight as you can. The fit of the corners can vary from very loose to very tight. Now, to get the rectangle corners to be as close to a straight 45 degree as possible, I'm going to be using the triangle ruler as a help. I'm placing it on top of the corner, which will help me see if the corner is off. Using the mallet to adjust. Do this all around the four corners. You can also sometimes use a ruler or measuring tape to check if the length is the same on both sides. I'm very carefully turning the stretcher bars around to not mess up the adjusted corners as I go around. I fix the corners with three staples on each corner. This is to keep the shape for when I start stretching. Because of the inconsistency of the fit, there might be a gap sometimes. 
try to get the staples to cover over the gap. I think this is good. Number two, cutting the canvas. Lay down the stretcher bars on the canvas. But first make sure the fabric is laying with the front side down and the back side up. And just to remember what is back and what is front, you could mark the back with a pencil. You can tell the back side of the fabric because it's more fuzzy. It's not as smooth as the front, um, which you'll be painting on. Uh, now also make sure the stretcher bars lie parallel to the weave lines of the fabric. I'm going to measure out a trim edge about 3.5 inches or 8.90 centimeters around the stretcher bars using the triangle ruler. You may get away with a bit less fabric, but you need enough to be able to pull the fabric with the plier. This also depends on how thin your stretcher bars are. Commercial canvases have less trim because they are machine made. Number three, iron out creases. If the fabric is too wrinkly and have very sharp folds, you might want to dampen it by spraying with water and then ironing them out before you stretch the canvas. Otherwise, it'll be too hard to get the creases out even uh, when the canvas is stretched taut. If the fabric only has uh, soft folds, they'll probably straighten out when you stretch the canvas. Number four, mounting the canvas. Place your fabric on the floor with the front side down and the back side up. Place the stretcher bars on the fabric with the beveled side down. When we stretch the fabric around the wooden bars, uh, it's important to do it around the rounder side, the beveled side, um, because uh, the sharp edges on the flat back side could actually tear into the fabric over time. I am using one staple on the center of the length on each side. First one, then stretching and stapling on the opposite side. Then I go to the next side where I staple and then stretching and stapling on the opposite side. I'm making sure to stretch firmly, uh, but not overly hard. You can see uh, the canvas on the front will look something like this with a sort of a diamond shape to the fold. Keep in mind that these first uh, four staples serve to keep the fabric in place for when you start stretching the canvas. Some of these first staples might have to be replaced if the fabric is too loose later on. Uh, then you can use a plier like this to get the staples out. Here I'm measuring and making small pencil marks for where the staples will go. I'm starting at the center and then I'm measuring out on each side, one inch between marks. If you're using stronger, sturdier fabric like cotton, which is also more elastic, then you might only need two or three inches between the staples. Do the same on each side. You can see that I'm writing the numbers 1 and then opposite 2 
then three and then opposite four. I'll be referring to these numbers as I start stretching the canvas. And number five, stretching the canvas. When stretching the fabric, you want to uh, fold the edge first and then grab the fold. Uh, otherwise, it's too easy to tear the canvas. When grabbing and pulling the fabric with the plier, hold it straight and perpendicular to the stretcher bar. Don't pull so hard that the fabric tears or changes the weave pattern. Starting on side number one, work out from the center, adding staples four at a time, meaning two on each side of the center, then switch to the opposite side of the canvas and do the same. Then rotate to side number three, do the same, and to the opposite side, number four, do the same here. The idea is that when you pull and stretch on the opposite sides, the tension is in a straight line. Notice also that I'm stapling on the sides of the canvas, not the back. If you use the thicker cotton canvas fabric, you could choose to staple on the back instead. When you get towards the end, always check on the front of the canvas if there are any pocking or little sort of uh, folds 
It's normal to have slacking and pucking towards the corners uh, until they um, also have been stapled by the corners. So at this point, you can use more force to get a good stretch for the staples by the corners. Now that we've stretched the whole canvas, we want to fasten the extra fabric on the back. I'm first folding a small hem before I fold the corners because otherwise there'd be threads hanging. Now fold the corners like this. and then stable them down. It can get a little bit bulky sometimes. Um, and then you want to fasten the rest of the fabric along the stretch parts. There, done! If this video was useful or interesting to you, please like and subscribe. I also love to read any comments you might have in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.